We are the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. We are the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania. And business in Pennsylvania is our business. Well, Joanne writes in, what is happening with the legislature to allow residential customers to opt out of the smart meter? Well, um, you know, in 2008, uh, smart meters were required to be deployed by all electric companies across the, the Commonwealth in three different ways. If a customer wanted one upon request, they're supposed to put one in. In newly constructed buildings, and since 2008, there's obviously been a mm -hmm. lot of new, newly constructed buildings, and I assume homes at the same time and to all other customers over the period of not more than 15 years. So uh, in 2008 to now, um, it, depending on where it is, is, is six years. So you get nine more years, so that's going to go in across. Um, what we have found is PPL, uh, which is here in central and somewhat eastern Pennsylvania, deployed advanced meters almost 10 years ago. And other areas like southeastern Pennsylvania, where PICO is, are, are being deployed now on a schedule approved by the uh, PUC. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joanne, I would just ask, and I'm not sure who your uh, provider is, you want to talk to your provider. And, you know, while we're talking about that, you know, um, people should really uh, take a look at, and sometimes I think we, we miss this, in this day and age, your electricity isn't necessarily being generated by the company that is delivering it to you. And you do have choice in your electricity generator. Uh, and you can take a look at the cost. And one of the things is there's a variable rate and there's a fixed rate, sort of like a mortgage. Yeah. Variable rate could be a little bit of a gamble. A fixed rate, you know what it's going to be. But there is choice out there in the, in the generation. The provider, or the person who distributes and gets it to you, to your home or your business, is probably not changing at all. All right, next email. This is going to be a semantic argument. I can see it coming. Uh, this is Albin in Sharon. <laughs> and uh, Albin writes in, Mr. Corbett, I would like to know why you say you did not raise taxes. You raised taxes on auto and truck fuel. You raised the fees on the turnpike when the fuel tax was supposed to take care of the roads. Now the raise in car and truck registration. How can you say you did not raise taxes? This is, I know it's semantic, but it's the well, question let, let, that well, I'll be, well, I'll well, one is Well, one is pretty clear. Let's talk about the, the uh, raising uh, the fees on the turnpike. I didn't raise them yeah. at all. I don't have any effect on the turnpike. And, in fact, the turnpike uh, has a schedule to increase their fees based upon legislation that was passed before I came into under office. Under Governor Rendell. Under Governor yeah. Rendell. If you remember, he wanted to privatize. He took some money and floated a bond. I mean, and, and to follow it, I, you know, I need a sheet here to, to be able to follow it. But those fees are automatically uh, put in place before I ever walked into office. So, uh, Alvin, I hope you'll agree with me on that one. When it comes to the other two, yes, it is going to be semantic. First off, um, we have a or had a cap on our tax. We had a tax on um, the um, wholesale price of gasoline. It was back in the 1980s. Um, and in the 1980s, they said, we're going to put a cap on it. So Because gas will never go higher you know, than $1.25 twenty five. That's exactly sure. right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So there was a percentage, and I forget what the percentage was, on wholesale gas. But then it went above $1.25, and the Commonwealth did not receive that revenue. And what they should have done is, at that time, take that cap off. And we wouldn't have been in the situation we were in. We would have had more money for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We would have been fixing the roads because all that money goes to transportation. And we wouldn't have the bad roads. And as I say, the 10,000 miles of roads that needed to be repaired and the 6,000 bridges that needed to be repaired for the 1.5 million children that get on 31,000 school buses on the roads of Pennsylvania. And, by the way, you in the, in the motoring public. The other day I was in a situation talking to people about it. And I said, how many of you in this room, and there were about 200 in the room, have uh, had to have your car realigned because you hit a pothole or had to have a tire replaced, and almost everybody put their hand yes. up, and there is a cost to that. So if we can get these roads fixed, you know, I look at it this way, you know, where you are controlling uh, the, the amount of, of revenue coming in by taking the cap off, and oh, by the way, we, we're taking off, <coughs> excuse me, we're taking off the gas tax, the state gas tax, the 12 cents gas tax mm -hmm. at the pump. Uh, so, you know, I honestly believe when you, when you take a look at the entire combination, uh, we are not increasing the, the taxes. We are just taking artificial cap off the tax. 
It's an election year. We, we don't focus much on election issues here. That's not what this show is about. But is this something you see as something you're going to have to be out there trying to fight this no. semantic argument no, during I, the campaign? No, I, I will tell you I have been pleasantly surprised by the reaction of the people of Pennsylvania. Some people are going to complain about it. That, that's right. But I will tell you there was a huge bipartisan coalition behind this. Um, we actually did some photos the other day for all the different coalitions that were involved Coalitions from the handicap with access uh, to highways and, mm-hmm. and roads, uh, the bicycle enthusiasts that you know I have a pin that's an iridescent <laughs> bicycle now, um, the 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 triple A I think was there, um, labor industry, um, Republicans Democrats, uh, businesses throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania municipalities throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the counties, the boroughs, the townships were all there. Um, And what we have found, contrary to what was being argued when this bill was being discussed, very little going on of opposition on this. People were saying, when are you going to start fixing the bridges? And as you know, the Secretary of Transportation has a bridge package out there, 600 bridges to start working on. As soon as we get into the the construction season, you're going to see the the roads being worked on. Mm -hmm. I would just ask everybody, when you see all those orange cones and barrels, have patience. It's a temporary inconvenience for a permanent improvement. We have some more emails, and I have some issues I haven't gotten to, but we're out of time for Ask the Governor, the radio edition. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I'm going to save that for a promo. I love to tease her. Would would you be able to stick around for another 10 or 15 minutes? And we'll record some bonus material that will be available on pamatters.com. We'll be talking about small games of chance. We'll go back to electricity rates, talk a little more about that. I want to hear about the NGA meeting down in D.C. that you Fine. just came back from. Uh, also, a couple of more emails, but that's all the time for the radio edition of Ask the Governor. For Governor Tom Corbett, I'm Brad Christman. Thanks for listening.